Okay, this is the problem solving part of, of the lecture. And uh, question, question one in the exercises, exercise six. Um, you're, given, you're given this group table. Right? Now, you've seen this before in earlier lectures. Uh, so the set is just these four even integers, so two, four, six, eight. The binary operator is you take the product and then mod, so you take the modulus, uh, 10. And what that means is you divide by 10 and you get the remainder, the residue, what's left over, and you put it in the appropriate position in the table. Okay, so for example, I know 6 by 8. So 6, 6, you do this one first, right? And this one second. So 6 by 8, so 6 by 8 gives you here. 6 eighths for 48, divide by 10, you get an, a remainder of 8. So you put the 8 here, the remainder. Okay? Now, uh, that's the group, that's the group table. So you have a, um, the order of the group is 4. So the number of entries in your square uh, group table, uh, group table is always square, okay? uh, will be uh, the order of the group squared. So it's 4 squared, so 16. Now, this is a fairly small group, right? Just order of the order of the group is only four. So often um, you can find subgroups. And that's that's the point of the of this question. Uh, find the subgroups of this group. Uh, you know, find all of them and uh, see which ones, if any, are proper subgroups. Okay. Well. Uh, now, the uh, trivial subgroups is the unit right, and the group itself. So we've got two immediately, and without thinking, it's just, just your background knowledge. All right, so what is, what is the unit here? So how do you know what the unit is? Well, you go looking for a row and a column where the row is the same as this. Like, like here it is, 2468, 2468. So, getting suspicious that 6 is your unit, and here, this column, also the same here. So, go, go back to the previous lecture when you I was uh, trying to pretend that I was Marcus de Sotoy, uh, looking for patterns. Okay, so it looks as though 6, 6 is the unit. So, uh, here, here we have one subset, it's a, a trivial uh, uh, subgroup. Right? So six is the, six is a unit, and the whole group itself. Well, I'm not going to write all that up. So just call it G. Right? This whole thing is G. That's that's G. Yeah? All right. Now what about subsets? Just just by inspection, looking looking at the thing, can you see some subsets? Now, if if there are some subsets, they have to include the unit. Sorry, subgroups. Right? Any group must have a unit. And the unit here is 6, so see if we can uh, find some other subgroups. Uh, well, so we only have three choices, right? So how about 6, if we, if, if we, if we tried 6 and 2, well, let's, let's write them out, I can cross them off. 6 or 2 or 3 or 6 or 4. And another possibility, I suppose, is 6. Uh, oh gosh. <laughs> then you had a lot of them, right? There are three more. Oh, okay, I'll do it systematically. And now, this, this is why it gets tedious when you're doing it this way. But uh, you can do it just almost from inspection without. I mean, it, you know, when, when your group gets large, it's much more intelligent to use this this type of proof, more a more algebraic sort of approach, rather than this quasi visual, looking at the table approach. So, well, let's try it. Six two. Let's try six two. Is it closed? Okay. Six. Six six two. That so gives two. Uh, and get a six. Okay. Now, two two gives four. Oh, well, that's four is not a member of this group, so that's out, right? It's not closed. Kill that. Okay, how about six three? Okay, okay, 
six three. Six. Sorry. Oh, there's no three. Sorry. What am I doing? Well, we've got six four, so this be six eight. <laughs> Uh, okay, six, eight. Six and eight. Okay. So we can have six sixes, that's okay. A six, eight gives that, that's okay. An eight, six gives eight, that's okay. An eight, eight gives four, not okay. Four is not, not a member of this one, so that's out. Okay, six, four. Uh, so these two and these two. So so 4, 4 gives 6, that's okay. 4, 6 gives 4, that's okay. 6, 4 gives 4, that's okay. 6, 6 gives 6, that's okay. So that's okay. Um, at least in terms of closure. Uh, so I've got the unit. It's closed. Uh, associativity is by inheritance. So we don't have to check associativity. Now what about inverse? Um, what's the inverse of 6? Well, it's just itself, right? Six, six by six gives six. Uh, now, what's the inverse of four? Uh, so, f four by four gives six. That's the unit. So, the inverse of four is four. So, each of them is self. Its inverse is itself. So, the inverse of six is six. The inverse of four is four. So, uh, that's a subgroup. And it's also a proper subgroup, okay? Because its order, the order of that uh, subgroup is two. The order of the group itself is four, and the order of the trivial group is one. So this is in the middle, sort of. So this this one six four is a proper subgroup. Uh, look, I yeah, it, it's it's sort of tease. I won't go through all the others. Um, I'll, I'll just mention what what the candidates are. So it could be six two four. You, know, you can you can test that. It could be six uh, two eight. Try that. And it could be six four eight. Is that all? Is that all possibilities? So given the six, so uh, you there's only three, right? Yeah. You, you eliminate one of them. So you do that three ways. Okay, so test all those, uh, and well, <laughs> yeah, do, do it yourself or just trust me, uh, they, none of them work. So the only, all proper, sorry, all subgroups are this one, this one, and the group itself. So the, there's only one proper subgroup, and that's this one, because its order is intermediate between one and the order of the group, which is four. Okay? Alright, uh, so that's the question one. Now question two, so question two. You're told, you're given a group G, and you're told that it's abelian. Abelian. Now, can you remember what that is? An abelian group, done, done that before in the earlier lecture. So just a bit of quick revision here. Uh, a group is abelian, it's based on the word abel. He was a famous Norwegian, uh, one of the pioneering, one of the very early group theorists in the 1800s, early 1800s, uh, from Norway, and the Abel, A-B-E-L, Abel Prize, which is sort of like the Nobel Prize, but for mathematics, the Abel Prize, started in 2003, fairly recent. Most people haven't heard about it yet. But, uh, you know, it's worth a lot of money. You, you win the Abel Prize as a mathematician and you'll get a million dollars. So it's, you know, it's just like the, the other Nobel Prizes. Okay, so uh, a group is abelian if for, for any two members of, of G, so for any, any pair, <coughs> uh, A binary operator B is the same as B binary operator A. So they commute. In fact, another name, an alternative name for an abelian group is a commutative group. To, to commute, remember, it's just swap swap around. Okay. Now let's let's uh, this is a bit tedious putting in the little circle all the time. So let's let's just use the so-called 
multiplicative um, notation. So, so we'll just shorten this to just AB. Okay, so AB is BA. All right, uh, so we're told that G is an abelian group. And you, you have to prove that the set of elements of order two, okay, so that they have the order of these elements of the group uh, are of order two, uh, is a subgroup of G. Uh, you know, look, I'll write it out that the set, the set of elements A belong or A, A belongs to G, right? Such that uh, the order, the order of that uh, element, or these elements, so is two. So that means that A squared is E. Okay. Remember. Um, if uh, k, k is the order of your element, then a to the k is e. Okay. Remember the very definition of the order of an element? It's the smallest positive uh, integer, k, such that a to the k, a to the power k, so that, that just means a times a times a, da -da 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 -da, k times, 